Even if you only have one jar of paint, the Hobby Mio paint mixer is an absolute game changer. We'll talk about why that is in today's video. What's going on everybody? Plamo Therapist here, and in today's video, I want to share something that I've been playing around with for the past few months now. Originally, I wasn't planning on doing a review of this, but after having such a blast and seeing how awesome this thing really is, I knew I had to give you guys my opinion and my thoughts on this thing. I'm excited, I hope you guys are too, so without further ado, let's head over to my workstation and review the Hobby Meal Paint Mixer. Straight out of the box, you're gonna get your mixer, two sets of securing straps to secure your paint down, two adhesive pads to secure your mixer to your table, and a power cable. The unit itself is a full metal body and is an absolute beast of a unit. The extra metal helps keep the center of gravity low when mixing, and it ensures that it can easily handle all the paint you're gonna run through this thing. Aside from the saddle and the power switch, there's nothing else to distract you from what this thing is meant to do, and that's mix your paint. So the next logical question is, what can this thing handle? And the answer is just about everything. From Kaiser to Vallejo, this thing can easily handle not only big bottles, but small ones as well. The multiple notches allow for easy adjustments to fit around anything small like the tiny Vallejo squirt bottles, and the elasticity of the straps allows it to stretch around the 120 milliliter Kaiser bottles. And because this mixer doesn't use any fancy equipment, as long as it fits within the saddle and the straps, you can use whatever bottles you have. So here I have my Hobby Mio paint shaker on my old desk, and I just want to show you guys how strong this thing is. Um, I'm going to be moving to a new desk soon, so I'm going to show you guys how strong this thing is. So watch. That's how much force it took to come off there. I had a sticker underneath there. But yeah, even with the sticker on the desk and the 3M tape, this thing still held very strong. Okay, so we're all set up in my paint station, and as you can see, I have my Hobby Meal paint mixer set up where I want it, and I have a bottle already attached to it. And the reason being is I just wanna make sure that the bottle that I have attached to it is the biggest one that I have that I know is secure and can fit. And I just wanna make sure that it doesn't bump into anything when it's sitting on this. So I'll usually give it about an inch or two of clearance from the edge of the bottle. Once you decide that's where you wanna place it, you're gonna take the double-sided tape that it comes with, and you're gonna go ahead and attach it to the bottom of the mixer before putting it down to the table. And that's all you need to do to get it set up. So let's go ahead and set the camera up for that right now and I'll walk you guys through how easy that is. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is make sure that the area you're gonna attach it to is nice and clean. Once that's done, the next thing you're gonna wanna do is attach the white side of your adhesive pad to the bottom of the mixer. If you have a brand new mixer, then you don't have to worry about the bottom of it. But if you're moving it like mine, just make sure that the bottom of your mixer is nice and clean. Once you remove the adhesive backing from the white side, what you're gonna to wanna to do is flip your paint mixer over so that you can align up the pad with the base of your mixer. Once that pad is lined up and set, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you rub out any air bubbles that might be trapped underneath the adhesive pad. The final step is to remove the red backing from the bottom of the adhesive pad and go ahead and line up your mixer with your desk. Take your time, make sure that thing is lined up, and once you're settled on where it's gonna be, give it a firm hard press and your Hobby Meal paint mixer is now set up and attached to your table. And don't forget to plug it in before you get started. So next up is performance. What I have here is a Gaia Red Brown that's been sitting on my shelf for quite a while now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and strap it down, and once I turn the machine on, I'm gonna have a timer in the bottom corner to let us know how long it takes to get this paint not only released from the bottom, but properly mixed in as well. The reason I have the bottle facing away from us is so that I can actually see the bottom of my jars. Usually when I do my mixer, I have the front end facing me, but for the purpose of this video, I have the jar facing away so you guys can see in real time how long it takes for this bottle to mix up and come to a consistency that is okay for me to use in my bottle. And we'll wait for the paint to finish up. If you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button and the bell notification so you can stay up to date on all of my latest videos. So right there, as you can see, we've stopped it at 32.01 seconds. And what I like to do now is once I'm done mixing my paint, what I like to do is I'll take the jar and I'll go ahead and check the bottom. When we move on to something like the alkaline paints, you'll understand why I like to invert the bottle to check to see how well it's mixed. I'll do the same thing here while I'll go ahead and turn on the timer, but as you can see, the alkaline paint's gonna mix in a lot faster than the um, guy notes painted. 
And so right there, a little over 10 seconds, you can see the alkali paint is done. And when I go ahead and invert the bottle, what you're going to tell you is that you can see completely through the jar, straight through the top. That lets you know that the glass is completely clean and the paint's mixed in. Where this paint mixer really excels is when you're preparing for your paint session to go ahead and get started. What I'll usually do is I'll take my first jar, generally it's going to be a primer. What I'll do is I'll go ahead and strap that in, turn that on, I'll just let that run while I get everything else set up. This helps me to make sure that as soon as I'm ready to go, I don't have to waste time shaking up a whole new bottle to get going. All I got to do is just get everything set up, turn off the paint mixer, add it to my paintbrush, and I'm ready to go. On top of that, when I'm between colors, let's say I'm switching from one color to another while I'm painting, what I'll go ahead and do is I'll get that next paint bottle um, started up on the paint mixer while I'll go ahead and clean my airbrush from the previous color before. This saves a lot of time, especially when you're doing longer paint sessions, because now you're not waiting for a paint to be mixed up and you're not trying to fight a bottle that might be old or that might have been sitting on a shelf for a little while. Ultimately, this is the greatest time saver. And again, no matter what type of paint that you use, this thing is gonna work great. So there you guys have it, my review of the Hobby Mio paint mixer. If you stuck around this far, be sure to leave a like. It lets me know you found value in the video. If you haven't done so already and you wanna stay up to date on any time I come out with a new video, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell notification so you don't miss a thing. Finally, you guys can pick up your Hobby Mio paint mixer from MidwestHobbyandCraft.com. I'll be sure to leave a link in the description as well as the pinned comment so you guys can find it right away. Anyway, that's it for me today, guys. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you found some value in this content. And remember, take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and I'll see you in the next one.